Okay, this screencast accompanies a lecture delivered in class covering the local group and beyond. Okay, first of all, here's a nice picture of M13. It's a globular cluster. Globular clusters are distributed around the center of the Milky Way, roughly in a spherical halo. By mapping out the positions of globular clusters, the American astronomer Harlow Shapley was able to determine the basic structure of the Milky Way and the sun's place within it. Okay, with respect to a typical globular cluster such as this, this is M13 in the constellation of Hercules, basically you're looking at a region of several hundred thousand stars crammed into a relatively small volume of maybe 50 light years vertical wide. Okay, moving outwards from there, okay, here's a nice artist rendition of the Milky Way galaxy, a typical barred spiral galaxy. The sun is located here about two-thirds of the way out from the galactic center. Okay, now immediately nearby the Milky Way galaxy itself are several other smaller satellite galaxies. These satellite galaxies are much smaller than the Milky Way. They are not spiral galaxies. They are instead what are referred to as dwarf irregular galaxies. Dwarf irregular galaxies are the most common types of galaxies in the universe. They are typically found as satellites of much larger galaxies, such as the Milky Way. The two most famous satellite galaxies of the Milky Way are located here and here. They are the large and small Magellanic clouds. They are only visible, however, from the southern hemisphere as seen from here on Earth. Give an idea of the size here of this cylinder that you're seeing. The cylinder itself is maybe about 500,000 or so light years wide, and then the Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years from end to end. Okay, now right here is a nice picture of the band of the Milky Way as seen from the southern hemisphere. And then off to the side right here is the large Magellanic Cloud and right here is the small Magellanic Cloud. They are both re located relatively close to the south celestial pole. So once again, they are not visible from here in the northern hemisphere. Okay, here's a nice photograph of the large Magellanic Cloud. It's about 150,000 light years away or so. It consists of several million stars. There is some star formation that is taking place within the LMC, but the overall shape of this particular galaxy, as you can see, is somewhat amorphous. That's why it's referred to as a dwarf irregular. Here's the small Magellanic Cloud. It is smaller than the large Magellanic Cloud. This is just a more magnified photograph. You can see, once again, that star formation is taking place within this galaxy. Right here is a large amount of young star clusters. Okay, moving outwards from the local group, or rather into the local group, we have right here the cylinder from a couple of slides ago depicting the Milky Way, and then we put that cylinder right here. So here's the Milky Way galaxy, and then relatively close by our next biggest neighbor, the next big spiral galaxy over from us is the Andromeda galaxy, roughly 2.2, 2.3 million light years away, and then another smaller spiral galaxy that is close to Andromeda but is further away from us, is Triangulum. So this then comprises what is called the local group of galaxies. This is basically our local galaxy cluster. The distance from one side of the cylinder to the other is about 3 million light years or so. Okay, this right here is a nice picture of the Andromeda galaxy. Once again, it's our next nearest big neighbor. It's about the size of the Milky Way, perhaps a little bit larger. It's an obliquely tipped spiral galaxy. It's kind of tipped on its side a little bit from our perspective here on Earth. You can also see here in this nice photograph, right here and here, two of the dwarf irregular galaxies that are close to Andromeda. Okay, here's a nice picture of Triangulum. It's actually smaller than Andromeda and the Milky Way. It's maybe about half the size, but it's once again a nice example here of a spiral galaxy. Okay, now the next group of galaxies over from the local group is called the M81 and M82 group. It's dominated by these two large galaxies, this spiral here, M81, and this irregular galaxy here, M82. The two galaxies are relatively close to each other. M82 in particular is pretty interesting. There's a large amount of star formation that's taking place here within this galaxy. We could see that from all this red activity that you can see here in this very nice detailed photograph. Okay, now both the local group and the M81 and M82 group are part of, part of a much larger conglomeration of galaxies referred to as the Virgo supercluster. The Virgo supercluster consists of several thousand galaxies that are kind of stretched out in this blobbish shape like so on this map. 
from one side of the cylinder to the other is in the neighborhood of about 100 million light years. The distance that the local group is where the Milky Way is located to the center of the Virgo supercluster is roughly 50 million light years. And then down deep in the center of the Virgo supercluster is the galaxy M87 that I refer to in lecture. Okay, now the direction of Virgo. Virgo is a prominent constellation that is high in the sky in the late spring and the early summer months. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, if you were to look at the sky in June, roughly towards just after sunset, looking in this direction towards the southwest, right here is the constellation of Virgo. And then right in this direction like so, on this more detailed map like this, Notice all of these individual ovals. Each one of these ovals here is an individual galaxy. So we're looking towards the center of the Virgo supercluster when looking in this direction. Here's an optical light photograph of the center of the Virgo supercluster. You're looking at actually several do uh, dozen galaxies here in this photograph. And then the center of the Virgo supercluster is dominated by this extremely large galaxy here, this giant elliptical galaxy referred to as M87. At the center of M87 lurks a supermassive black hole of absolutely mind-boggling size. It's the single most massive object that we know of that is relatively nearby. Its distance from us is about 50 million light years. Here's a nice photograph of M87. It's not a spiral galaxy. It's a giant elliptical galaxy. I described briefly how such a galaxy is formed in lecture. And then what's most interesting about this galaxy is right here you can see this thin blue line that is coming from the center. This right here is an enormous jet of radiation that is coming from the central supermassive black hole of this galaxy. All of this fuzz that you see right here is in the neighborhood of several trillion stars that makes up this galaxy. This galaxy is absolutely gargantuan. Okay, the high energy jet of radiation coming from the black hole was first noticed by astronomers in the 1930s. Here's a very famous Hubble Space Telescope close-up photograph of the jet of radiation coming from the central supermassive black hole of M87, which is deep in this region here. The amount of energy that is pouring out of this relatively small region here at the core of this galaxy is far above anything that ordinary stars can produce. The only thing that we know of in nature that could produce all of this activity is the region surrounding a supermassive black hole as a huge amount of matter pours down the drain of the black hole itself. Okay, then as the matter pours down the drain, some of that energy is blasted out of the pole of the black hole like so as this high energy jet of radiation. This high energy jet of radiation, and there's one on the other side as well, is thousands of light years long. Okay, the jet of radiation is actually kind of almost pointed directly at us. So it's a little bit difficult to tell the length of the jet of radiation here from this photograph. Okay, here's an artist's rendition of the structure of material when you have a large amount of material going down the drain of a supermassive black hole. This type of an object is also known as a quasar. Basically, you have right here the black hole itself, and then this right here is called an accretion disk. This is basically all the material that's pouring down the drain of the black hole, and a huge amount of light, a huge amount of energy is radiated outwards from the accretion disk. And then further outwards from the accretion disk itself is this huge porous of material that's in orbit around the black hole, being blasted out of the poles of the accretion disk and the black hole like so here, and here is these ultra high energy jets of radiation. Here's an artist's rendition of the gas torus surrounding uh, the supermassive black hole of M87. Get this, M87's gas torus, this donut of material, is in the neighborhood of 120 light years wide. That's absolutely mind-boggling as to how big this structure is, and that starts to give you an idea of how massive the black hole itself is. The mass of this black hole is in the neighborhood of billions of solar masses. It's an order of several orders of magnitude larger than the central supermassive black hole of the Milky Way. Okay, here's a now, by, by now, a very famous photograph of M87's black hole. This is a radio image of the black hole, and you can see right here the event horizon of the black hole. The event horizon of the black hole encompasses a volume here that's actually larger than the solar system, okay?